Hey, Heather, how are you? I'm okay. How are you doing this morning? Pretty good. I mean, uh, this is the first time that we've actually had you on the show since uh, you have won the election. I know. I'm, I really would love to be up there in person today, but um, it is a sheet of ice on the shoreline, and it took me about 20 minutes just to get in my car. <laughs> Well, yeah, I was trying to get outside this morning, and my wife's uh, my wife's uh, windshield wipers were frozen onto her car. Mine were miraculously okay. So, did you slip and slide this morning? Yeah, unfortunately, we have one of those gravel driveways that gets no sun, so it is literally, you know, and it's downhill. So, the poor dog this morning was on all fours, heading down towards the road. You know, it's. Uh, I keep bothering my husband about getting that fixed, but he hasn't done it yet. (laughs) Finally, I get to wish you congratulations on your victory. Thank you. And uh, I hear you're pretty tough in Hartford. I hear you've been pretty tough right from the right from the get go. So uh, shall we call shall we call you the heater? (laughs) I like to think of it as tough in a good way. All right, because I'm defending our (laughs) citizens against egregious tax increases and bad policy. So Ooh, that's, that's the way I like to think of it. It almost sounds like Batgirl. Heather the Heater. <laughs> that sounds so cool. <laughs> so we have Lisa Cole yeah, here. I mean, oh, hi, Lisa. How are you? I'm great, Heather. How are you in this glorious I'm day? I'm okay. It, 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 it's uh, quite a lovely, uh, icy, hot mess out there. I don't know if you can be an icy, hot mess. So let's let's jump right into it, if you don't mind. I got a I got a uh, one of the press releases I was uh, reading had to do with uh, you and uh, Senator Formica uh, support uh, supporting a bill to protect casino jobs and tourism. That's correct. That's one. There's uh, there's quite a few. We have um, some bipartisan support on um, a devastating rail plan that will come through uh, the shoreline communities and. Um, come right through the Mystic Aquarium, state our small towns that we have bipartisan support on. Um, I've put in many, many bills that have to do with taking the tax that we impose on Social Security, taking that off, taking getting rid of the business entity tax, roll back the hospital gross receipts tax, the surgical care tax, um, trying to do things to help people be able to stay in our state. Uh, we did just have a, a bill, um, Kevin and I both sponsored, um, concerning um, no state land would be able to be taken by the state unless it passes by a referendum in the town. That was to protect uh, your area towns against the gun range. Right. So we've been doing a lot of different things. Um, there's um, bills in for... Um, uh, limiting your ability to carry, carry your pistol, um, even though we have open carry here. So Kevin and I are um, advocating against that bill. There is um, things like opening up bear hunting season. Um, in public health, we're dealing with legalizing marijuana, with um, scope of practice, which I'm sure Lisa would be interested in. Uh, and 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 why am I the pothead? I'm just kidding. No, no, it's the scope of practice. The scope of practice for nurses. And oh, okay. MAs and no, 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 yeah. no. Oh, okay. um, you know, allowing um, medical assistants to be able to administer vaccination. Um, a lot of many, many different things going great. We are so far behind um, in the state of Connecticut, especially in long-term care, with um, allowing uh, nurse assistants to be trained to pass medications. We, uh, on the nursing side, you know, we're so shackled with the massive volume of paperwork that we have to do that it's a wonder that, you know, we get out on the floor to pass meds. Rhode Island's been doing it for years, so that would be something that would help us immensely. Right, absolutely. And, um, you know, I think there's 48 other states that allow it. We're one of the two that do not. And um, really the only opposition that we heard, ironically, was from the um, Nurses Association. They do not want to allow uh, medical assistants to be able to administer vaccinations. And and that's incredibly backwards. It's, and, you know, yeah, when so you, we and had some your... uh, testifying in, in support and others, um, but the head of the Nurses Association was... Um, testifying against it, feeling that there wasn't enough training. And it's it's kind of funny because my husband's a physician and there's a few physicians on the um, 
public health committee, and they all said, geez, we didn't know how to give a, a vaccine or injection. We had to have the uh, nurses teach us how to do it. So it can be done. So um, those are some of the things that we're looking at. Well, I, I have a question, and, and I've talked to every every legislator I, I come across. Mm-hmm. This, I ask them this question, and it's uh, I, I think it's something that personally I think will help the state, but this is just my own thing. How do you feel about the, the legalization of uh, recreational marijuana? Uh, you know, I can tell you that that bill did not get out of committee. Um, it wasn't even um, – brought to the floor to be, we had a public hearing on it, and then normally it would get put on an agenda to be heard if there is support on both sides, and there was not enough support on both sides to even have it be brought to the floor. And I believe the reason is there are people that want to be able to sit back and watch what happens in other states and the issues that they deal with before Connecticut jumps in on that. And, yes, there is revenue that could be, you know, generated, obviously. Um, However, what we found is that in other states there still is a very large black market for marijuana because the price after it's taxed and regulated is so high that there still exists this whole black market for marijuana, number one. Number two, there's concern about the fact that there's no test available to test for present active intoxication of marijuana versus marijuana that's been in your system for, you know, 30 days. So there's this whole liability issue that, um, you know, uh, is something that the state would have to wrestle with should, let's say, a state employee be driving a snowplow or something and gets in an accident and takes test. How do we handle that? Performing Um, your appendectomy. Another (laughs) another issue that came up is the... um, data that we have that shows that the legalization encourages um, younger folks between the ages of 16 to 21 to try it, where it has a very um, negative effect on the growing brain. So there's a lot of questions, I should say, that are still surrounding how you do it, how you implement it, and the benefits versus the risks associated with it. So um, I think it is something that probably will happen, but it's not going to happen in this session. It's you know, they're taking a more cautious uh, approach into implementing um, that type of legalization here in Connecticut. That's, a, that's, a, that's, that's the uh, most complete answer I've had yet. And I, and I, think it, and <laughs> I can go on and on, but I'm not sure everybody wants to talk about it. You know, the uh, it's very interesting, some of the data, some of the um, issues that surround the transfer of money. Colorado has seen, for example, a whole new banking industry because you cannot put the money into a federally insured bank because it's not federally it's illegal federally so really? there's a that's lot of interesting. Issues that's that's really interesting through you know unless you want to have these big vaults of cash laying around um <laughs> so um we well not just this committee but you know this is a bipartisan effort of looking at it um we wanted to have it heard in public health we thought that was important to um, have people testify on it, and we were there from 10 in the morning until 2.30 in the morning wow. listening to testimony on, on this issue. And it was what I found most surprising was the most people that were testifying were people that had the medical marijuana card that wanted the ability to grow their own plants because the medical marijuana um, it was so cost prohibitive for them to purchase it. Some people were spending close to $1,000 a month with the um, amount of medication that they needed, it, and they would want the ability to maybe grow, have six of their own plants so that they could, you know, supplement or be able to self-grow their, their medication. So that's not, not a lot of people for I just want to have it for recreational purposes. Mostly I want to be able to grow it in my own home for my medicinal purposes. So that was surprising to me. Huh. So not the Fourth of July party. <laughs> no, not the Fourth of July party. No. Oh, I just uh, I just got a message from um, Kevin Schoolcheck uh, a second ago, and um, he. he uh, Isn't he at Hartford in a committee meeting? You know what's going on? What is he? Is he well, I, I think it's what, time to be listening. What's going on with him? He's not here. I mean, it's the the, the thing about uh, the you know when when Heather Summers speaks, people listen. So. <laughs> I wish that was true. <laughs> <laughs> and, and anyway, because, you know, I had just said to you, you know, that was a, that was the most complete answer. And uh, uh, Kevin, of course, time, uh, chimed in and said, I gave you the same answer, <laughs> which he did. Which, 
Yeah, then he said... Okay, well, I guess it's a tie then. I didn't realize... I thought we were a team. It's not competition. Well, then you know? he told me to stop sucking up to you. So... <laughs> you're, you're, you're kind of a suck-up. 